Hey everybody, let's greet each other properly. Good morning to you. This is Mr. Ainsworth. And we're going to get into a big lesson here on what's called a linear function. And uh, so get ready, have your pencil and red pen handy. And remember this is a video here, so if I go too fast, uh, well, you got to use it properly, okay? You can pause and play and go at your own pace. All right, let me emphasize this. I want you to pause and play. Rewind if you like and go at your own pace. Go, oh, a little crazy right there, at your own pace. Really important to use the technology. That's a W right there. All right, so I'm going to get a little goofy a little bit, have a little bit of fun, teach you about what's called the linear function in many different forms, slope, intercept form, standard form. We're going to talk about uh, relations and functions and domain range and all that. And so this is a big, huge lesson here, so get ready to go. The first thing I want to do is talk about uh, some very important concepts called domain range relation and the idea of a function. All right, so we're going to start off with what's called the domain. And the domain is simply this. It is the input. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and we're going to use a little bit red to highlight the important things here. Okay, the input, typically the x values in the function, like y equals mx plus b, if it's y in terms of x, but it's not always the case. But in general, we can say that it's the input values, okay, of the independent variable. Now, as I was saying, that's typically x, but that's not always the case, because in physics and other uh, subjects here, the variables of choice vary depending on the uh, the situation, okay? So it's not always y in terms of x, but in this case, let's assume it is. And so the independent variable x is the input, okay? The range, it's a little bit different concept. Typically, the y variable in order pairs, x comma y, if it's y in terms of x, it's the output, it's what you get out of the functions. We're going to call it the output. That's one way to think about it. It's the output values all right, of what's called the dependent variable. Okay. Now, if it's y in terms of x, well, it's the variable y in this case. Now, relation, uh, we define that very simply as just a set of order pairs or points. It's a set or a collection, a set of ordered pairs Okay, as we're talking about x comma y, okay, or points, okay, and that set can have just a few points in it, or it can have an infinite set of points in it, such as a line or a graph, okay? So it's just a set of ordered pairs. The idea of a function, well, that's a bigger concept, and that's what we're going to get into first, okay? So if y is a function, and let's underline the keyword here, is a function of x, if y is a function of x, and let's put the next part here, then for each value, for each x value, all right, there is only one y value. Now that concept right there takes a while to learn and understand and so you can be able to apply this definition of what's called a function. All right, so let's get into uh, what are called some mapping diagrams where we take a look at the domain and the range of each relation here, which is just a set of order pairs, pairs and then uh, apply the definition of a function, okay? So in example one, we are given a relation, <coughs> excuse me, a relation here and we want to state the domain, the x values, we want to state the range, the y values, and determine if it represents a function. Is this relation a function? So the best way to see it is what's called a mapping diagram. Everybody say mapping diagram. Okay, get a little crazy in here. So what we're going to do, uh, remember that every order pair is in the form of x comma y. Remember that in, in this case right here. So my range, excuse me, my domain is just a set of values uh, consisting of my x coordinates. The first coordinates here, okay, that's my x value. So what I list the domain here and the range here, I'm going to list those values. Now, keep an important point here, I'm going to put this, here's the key here. 
one one gear at least. Okay, only list values once if they repeat. Only list values, whether it's domain or range, doesn't matter. Once uh, if they repeat. This is an important point here, okay? So pause the video and write that down if you need to. All right, only list values once for the repeat because you're going to see something happen uh, in the mapping diagrams, which you either may or may not violate the definition of a function. And you're not going to see it if you list repetitions, but you'll see it if you list it only once if they do repeat. Excuse me. Okay, so here we go. Going to list the x values first. 2, 4, negative 3, and 0. So 2, 4, negative 3, and 0. Now we say that 2 gets mapped to 3. So we draw an arrow from 2 to 3. You can say mapped. You can say associated with. You can say paired up with. But the technical word, okay, is mapped. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. All right, that's a new word. Everybody say mapped, okay? X is mapped to Y. So that the values of x in the domain get mapped to the each value or to the values of in the range called the y values all right so 2 is mapped to 3 4 is mapped to 1 negative 3 is mapped to negative 1 and 0 is mapped to 1 oops let me fix that 0 is mapped to 1 here there we go all right so notice something here in the diagram 2 is mapped to 3 and only 3 4 is mapped to 1 and only 1 Negative 3 is mapped to negative 1 and only 1. And 0 is mapped to 1 and only 1. Okay? So for each x value, there is only one y value. So I can say on this one right here, this is called conclusion, put the c in there, that y is a function of x here. Or this relation here is a function. Okay? The relation, all right, is a function. Why? Because every x value is mapped to only one y value, only one. Notice in the definition here, it says for each x value, there's only one, not two y values, but only one. Now, if there is more than one, well, it gets violated, and then we're going to say it's not a function. So in this next relation here, let's take a look at the domain and the range. All right, remember, domain set of x values, range set of y values. And let's list them out. Okay, so in the range, I see, excuse me, in the domain, I see 1, 3, negative 3, 1, ooh, I see a repetition right there, and then 2. So we only list it once, though, as I said. So 1, 3, negative 3, and 2. So 1 gets mapped to 4, 3 gets mapped to negative 2, negative 3 gets mapped to 4, and 1 gets mapped to negative 2 right there okay and 2 gets mapped to 5 notice right here let's circle this guy We've got a little problem right here 1 gets mapped to two y values it gets mapped to 4 and it gets mapped to negative 2 so right here when there's a repetition in the domain it gets mapped to more than one y value it violates the definition definition of a function so this relation is not a function okay the relation is not right a function and let's put down the reason why all right why question mark all right phi uh, one is mapped to two y values is mapped all right to two y values that's the reason why or you can just say like this let's put it in red here this is a cool way to do it one gets mapped to four and negative two so one gets mapped to four and negative two those are the two y values. Definition of a function says that can't happen. All right, and that's why this relation is not a function. So it's important that you guys know why the relations are not functions. And that's why I put the y part down here, okay? So always be able to say why, because that's really test to see if that you know uh, what's going on. Okay, so now on this, these two, I want to plot, okay? Plot means graph the relations, which is just a set of points on the coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, 2 comma 3 is right 2 up 3, 4, 1, right 4 up 1, negative 3, negative 1 is left and down, so left 3, down 1, 
and 0 comma 1 is right up here it's just up 1 all right and the uh, notice that 2 is mapped to 3 2 is mapped to 3 and only 3 4 is mapped to 1 and only 1 negative 3 is mapped to negative 1 and only negative 1 and 0 is mapped to 1 and only 1 all right so this one is this relation here is a function so we have a function right here. Okay. The question is, how can you tell visually, okay, which represents a function by only looking at the graph? So let's graph this other one. Let's see what's going on. All right. So one gets mapped to four, right here. Three gets mapped to negative two, right here. Negative three gets mapped to four. Negative three, four here, and one gets mapped to negative two here ooh, something's weird going on so one gets mapped to two different values and two gets mapped to five so two gets mapped to five up here well notice we have one it's mapped to four and it also gets mapped to negative two and they're located here and here and notice that there's a difference between the graphs i see two points lining up vertically right here <clears throat> So I'm going to draw the vertical line right here. And I notice that this value of x1 gets mapped to negative 2, and it gets mapped to uh, it gets mapped to 4. All right? And so if the points line up vertically, all right, I can tell that it's not going to end up being a function because this 1x value right here, this is an x value, gets mapped to two y values if they line up vertically. We call this the vertical line test. Okay, so how can you tell visually? Well, you can call it the pencil test, or you can call it the vertical line test. If you sweep your pencil vertically across the graph and it and it intersects more than one point, then the graph does not uh, represent a function. Let me write that down. So if you take a vertical line or sweep a pencil or a vertical line, if you sweep or move, okay, sweep, move, a vertical line this is important a vertical that means straight up and down so a vertical line let's draw a visual here okay and that's up and down a vertical line like this okay from left to right see if I can draw a vertical I draw a vertical line here 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 and here okay notice that they only intersect one point maximum here that doesn't happen right here well, right here it's one point, right? And over here it's one point. But oh, here I intersected two points. So if you sweep or move a vertical line from left to right, all right, from left to right, okay, uh, and it intersects more than one point, and it intersects more than one point. keyword more than one um, then the relation is not a function okay so it's an easy way to tell whether the relation as a graph is not a function if you intersect more than one point then it's not a function Okay, so on these next few right here, this is practice for you. So this is where you pause and play, okay? This is where you try it on your own. And then after you're done, you go ahead and you press play, and you watch and you check your work, okay? So right now, I want you to pause the video, okay? Pause and try the examples. Because these are meant for practice. And typically, if you're with me live in class, uh, then you know obviously I'd give you time okay so right now though I want you to pause and try the examples then play alright and check work meaning listen to me and check all your work okay pause the video okay I'm going to assume that you're back now and you've done your work so we're going to be checking here so let's let's go ahead and continue here let's draw some mapping diagrams so um, to list the domain and ranges here I see Let's see, I see 1, negative 3, negative, ooh, that repeats right there. So, and 0. 1 gets mapped to 6, negative 3 gets mapped to 5, and it also gets mapped to negative 7, and 0 gets mapped to 4. Okay, so right here, 
3 gets mapped to 5 and negative 7, so it's not a function. Okay, why? Because 3 gets mapped to two y values. That's the reason why. Excuse me, negative 3 gets mapped to 5, and it also gets mapped to negative 7. One x value gets mapped to two y values, and that violates the definition of a function. Over here, what's going on? Okay, so 1 gets mapped to 4, 3 gets mapped to 4. So far, okay, it's only it's 1x value gets mapped to only one y value. So far, so good. Negative 2 gets mapped to 4, 5 gets mapped to 8, and 7 gets mapped to 0. Okay, each x value gets mapped to only one y value. So this is this relation is a function. Okay, because each x value gets mapped to only one y value. How about on these? Now, if you did not do these yet, press pause and try them, okay? You always got to try things first on your own to get an idea. So use the video effectively and pause and play throughout. Okay, I'm going to assume that you're ready to go. So here we go. So 1 here, this is the domain and this is the range. 1 gets mapped to negative 1. Negative 3 gets mapped to 4. 0 gets mapped to 2. And 9 gets mapped to 4. So 9 gets mapped to 4 up, up there. Okay. So 1x value, 1y one value. Negative 3 gets mapped to 4 and only 4. 0 gets mapped to 2 and only 2. And 9 gets mapped to 4 and only 4. So this is a function. Okay. This is a function. This relation, it's called a relation, is a function. How about over here though? So 2 gets mapped to 4, it gets mapped to 7, it gets mapped to 5. I can already tell this guy is the culprit, okay? It gets mapped to 3 y values, and right away I can see that this is not a function. So this relation is, okay, not, okay, a function. Why? Because 2 gets mapped to 4, 7, and 5, okay? 2 gets mapped to 3 y values. Definition of function says that can't happen. Okay. Now on this one here, on these, you do the vertical line test. So here we use what's called the vertical line test. So you sweep a pencil or a vertical line, which goes this way, across the graph from left to right. So I'm going to draw it visually so you can see it. So far, I'm only intersecting one point. Here, only one point. Here, zero points. Here, oh, we got a problem. Okay, intersect two points. This is what's going to cause it to fail. See, 3, the x value 3, 3 gets, this is 3 comma 0. Let me just write it here, 3 comma 0. And this is 3 comma 2 right here. So 3 gets mapped to 2 and 0. So this is not a function. Okay, why? Because of what I just said right here. Vertical line intersects two points. 3 comma 0, 3 comma 2, 3 gets mapped to two y values and it's not a function. Here I intersect one point, one point, no points, one point, one point, one point, one point, okay? No points, All right? So here I can only intersect one point, so this is a function. So you simply sweep a vertical line or your pencil from left to right. And if you can intersect more than one point, it's not a function. If you cannot intersect more than one point, well, the graph represents a function. And that's a quick intro to what's called domain range and the idea of a function. Now let's take a look at a, uh, some characteristics of the linear function, okay? So first of all, linear functions typically is in this section here, I'm going to be coming in two basic forms. One's called slope-intercept form, all right, y equals mx plus b, and the other one's going to be standard form, and which is ax plus b, y equals c. Okay, what are some common characteristics? Okay, first of all, the very first, first thing we're going to find out is that the graph, if we graph the function, the graph is a line, okay? is a line, which means it can look like this. It can look like something with positive slope, 
or it can have negative slope. Uh, it could also be horizontal. All right, this is called horizontal. All right, it could also be vertical. Okay, there's only four different types of lines. Okay, ones with positive slope, negative slope, horizontal, which is zero slope, vertical, undefined slope. Okay, we also uh, know because of this that the rate of change, everybody say rate of change, rate of change, which we talked about before. I abbreviate that ROC in my lesson. All right, the rate of change, which is the slope of the line, slope, M for monte, monte is equal to a constant, okay? Is constant. That's an important concept. Is constant. Okay, it's equal to some value, okay? That, that rate of change, that delta y divided by delta x is a constant, okay? Whatever that constant may be. Maybe four, maybe three halves. I don't know what it is. It could be negative one fourth, but it's constant for all lines. And one other thing uh, that I just might mention is that another common characteristic here is that there are first degree functions. First degree. First degree. And what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at it. What do I mean by first degree? I mean the exponent of the variables is 1. Okay. All right. And a little bit more than that. Okay. So it's either got to be in one of these two basic forms up here, slope intercept or standard form. And also, it's got to be first degree. So here, if we solve for y, it asks me to solve for y if possible here. If you can do it. All right, and I'm going to do it here just for funsies here. I want to divide by x on both sides. And I get y is equal to 4 divided by x. All right, now, you can also write it as 4, 4 times x to the negative 1 right here. And notice the value of the exponent is negative 1. And it's not positive 1. It's not first degree. All right, we got a problem here. I want to show you that too, by the way. So y equals 4 divided by x. Let me uh, display the graph. This is a cool program here. So I'm going to show you what the graph looks like. y equals, y equals, where's my equal sign? y equals 4 divided by x. So 4 divided by x. All right, let's graph this line. And look at the line right here. Oops, let me change this right here. Look, it's a curve, okay? It's not a line at all. It doesn't have a constant rate of change. The slope's changing as you change x. So this is definitely not a linear function, okay? So this is not linear. Let's write that down. It's not linear because we've got all kinds of issues. It's not first degree. The variable's in the denominator. It's not in slope-intercept form like, you're, like I was saying up here. It's in neither one of these two forms. I'm talking about this form here or this form here, we'll call it standard form, so it's not linear. Non-linear, everybody say non-linear, okay, non meaning not. Okay, it's not a line, not a line as you saw. Okay, so if you see variables in the denominator, it's not going to be linear. This one here, oh, this is in standard form right here. This is a times x plus b times y equals c. Okay, notice the exponents, when you don't see them, they're 1, okay? And this is this is definitely in standard form, so this is linear. If you graph this, uh, it will be a line, negative 2x plus 3y. Might as well do it, right? Okay, let's do it real quick. Why not? So let's, let's change it right here. So negative, uh, negative 2x plus 3y. Equals, what is it equal to here? Hmm. Let me go back here. Uh, equal to 9. Okay, so 9. Let's put a 9 in there just for funsies here. All right. And look at this. Oh, my goodness. It's a line. It has a constant rate of change. So hopefully you're believing me here. It is linear. Okay, and this one here, y equals 2x squared plus 5. Ooh, right there, it's second degree. This one's second degree, okay? And this one happens to be a parabola, okay? This one's parabolic. It looks like this. All right, so this is not linear. And we got both variables second degree. So this one's another, uh, what looks like a parabola. Actually, it's not a parabola. It's a hyperbola. So uh, this is something we'll learn later on. This is second degree, nonlinear. 
okay and this right here this can uh, the square root function here uh, you're gonna learn that it's uh, the same thing as x to the one half that's not linear either okay this one these right here do not uh, act like lines they don't have a constant rate of change okay they are definitely different than the functions that we're studying okay so let's study functions that are linear let's get into it okay and we're gonna start off with a, what are called our basic parent functions parent functions okay like mom and dad okay all the other functions kinda of look like these guys they kinda of behave like these guys cuz they're the offspring okay so let's learn from the parents what they look like and then be able to apply it to our our new functions called the offspring alright so let's take a look at uh, the first two parents here y equals x that means whatever x is y is the same thing and notice here that means the um, if you compare y equals m times x plus b right here notice that the coefficient one uh, is m we'll talk about what that means and if you don't see a b value well I guess that has to be zero so it'll be a zero in this case so y equals x so let's pick a domain and when you pick a domain uh, for the function here which is your input their set of x values you're gonna get something in the output okay which is called the range okay your set of y values so let's pick some negatives let's pick some positives so you can see how the function behaves okay y equals x well if y equals x then whatever x is y is the same thing so this is negative 3 negative 2 when x is negative 1 y is negative 1 when x is 0 y is 0 okay this is called the first parent function alright let's plot these points okay so here we go so negative 3 negative 3 so left 3 down 3 let me put this in red so we can see a little bit better. Left 2, down 2. That's negative 2 and negative 2. So you got to go left and down. Negative 1, negative 1 is left and down. 0, 0 is your origin. 1, 1. Right 1, up 1. Right 2, up 2. Right 3, up 3, and so on. You can see how the line's behaving right now. All right. This is what the first parent function looks like. It has. A... Now let's take a look at some rate of change. Okay. You got a from from right here we got a y-intercept it's where the line crosses the y-axis here definition of y-intercept let's write it down okay where or the point not where but the point let's be specific the point where the line crosses or meets okay the y-axis Okay, now the y-axis is vertical and the x-axis is horizontal. And it meets, this line meets uh, the y-axis right here at 0, 0. There's your y-intercept. The slope of the line, you got to go from point to point. So you got to go up 1, right 1. Okay, so the rise is 1 and the run is 1. So my slope, m, this is the slope now, all right, is 1 divided by 1 or 1, which happens to be, all right, the coefficient. Okay, so M stands for slope. So we could actually just use the slope on the y-intercept and not the table to graph this line. Okay, so in this case, the slope, in this case, or your rate of change, so rate of change, the slope, delta Y divided by delta X, is this case, or you can say rise, and divided by run, is equal to up one, right one, or one. And the y-intercept is zero comma zero. It's where the it's where the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay. Okay. So my next uh, function here. All right. Let's continue here. So we just talked about y equals x, which we confer to refer to as let's say one parent function or the dad. All right, and let's take a look at the other parent function, the mom, okay? Y equals negative X. No connotation on the negative there. Okay, so let's pick the domain and the range here. Let's pick uh, values from negative 3 to positive 3. So we can see how the, the second parent function behaves. You always got to pick some negatives, 0, and put some positives right here in the domain. Remember, this is the input or the uh, what's called the domain, the input values, and this is the output. 
what's called the range. Okay, so y equals y equals negative whatever x is. You're going to substitute x in here. All right, so this can be referred to as negative or what's called the opposite. All right, I got y is the opposite of whatever x is. All right, so if x is negative 3, the opposite of negative 3, well, that's positive 3. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. The opposite of 0 is 0. Opposite of 1 is negative 1. Opposite of 2 is negative 2. And opposite of 3 is negative 3. So let's see what this function behaves, or how this function behaves, and let's take a look at it. So negative 3 comma 3 is left 3 up 3. Negative 2 comma 2 is left 2 up 2. Negative 1 comma 1 is left 1 up 1. Then we have the origin. And then 1 negative 1 is right 1 down 1. Then right 2 down 2. And then right 3 down 3. This is right and down. Okay. As opposed to this one, it's left and up. That's why I want left 3 up 3. Now you can see that the second parent function is different. It slopes in the negative direction right here. It intersects the y-axis right here, so we have y-intercept at, at the origin. But this slope's different, okay? You go down one, right one. So the slope here, the slope, which is delta y over delta x, or you can say rise over run, okay, is negative 1 over 1 or negative 1. And we can see that in the, in the function itself. It's right here, okay? y equals negative x is y equals negative 1 times x. And notice that there's no b value. There's no constant being added. So I can tell that the y-intercept is 0. Okay, You can see the slope and see the y-intercept in the function itself when you get experienced. You can even graph the function using that and, not, and bypass the table. You don't need the table values to graph these functions. That's part of what you want to be understanding here is that, yeah, we're using the table to generate the points, but you can plot these functions using just the slope and the y-intercept. Now, all these linear functions look like their parents. However, the offspring right here, which is y equals 2 thirds x, looks a little bit different because the slope's different. All right, so let's investigate ones with a slope of 2 thirds. I'll talk about that. Why is this slope? Slope equals 2 thirds here which is obviously positive, ones with positive slope, and then we'll take a look at ones with negative slope and so on. Now we're going to develop each one by plotting points and then we're going to see how this uh, each one behaves and how you can graph these functions by using what's called the slope and the y-intercept because it, that you can do easily. You don't need to do the table of values. However, if I ask you to pick a table of values or develop a table of values to plot the function, you should be able to. So let's pick some appropriate domains, calculate the range given the domain, and then graph the function. Now since I'm being, if I'm multiplying x by 2 thirds, I have to multiply by 2 and divide by 3. So I'm going to pick multiples of 3 because of that. So right here, you want to pick properly. I mean, you could pick any uh, value in the, x, uh, in the domain you want. However, I'm going to pick multiples of 3 because it's going to make my calculations easier. If I didn't have a fraction and I wasn't dividing by 3, it wouldn't matter. Okay, what are multiples of 3? They're like negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, 9, etc. All right, so I'm going to start off with negative 6, and then negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. Now, y equals 2 thirds times that, so 2 thirds times 6. Well, I know that 2 times 6 is 12, divided by 3 is 4, so I know the answer is 4. Or you can divide first, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. You can divide first. I usually do because that's easier. All right, let's try it. Let's try it again. So 2 thirds times, excuse me, that was a negative 6, so negative 4. Got to be careful there. So 2 thirds times negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, divided by 3 is negative 2. Or you can divide first. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1, times 2 is negative 2. 2 thirds times 0 is just 0, anything times 0 is 0. 2 thirds times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 3 is 2. 2 thirds times 6, 
2 times 6 is 12, divided by 3 is 4. So let, let's plot the points, okay? Left 6, down 4. Left 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 4, right about here. You're going to have to approximate. Okay, so we went left and down. We go left and down. So left 3, down 2. 0, 0. Right and up. So right 3, up 2. And then right 6, up 4. You're going to have to approximate this one your way up here. All right, take straight edge out, all right, and graph your line. So now let's notice something here. The y-intercept is right here at 0, 0. I know that because it's plus 0 right here. y equals m times x plus b. I can already see that the y-intercept is 0 in the function. The slope I can see right here. Slope is 2 thirds. What does that mean? Well, get your red pen out. Here we go. We're going to put your pen at the y-intercept. You go up 2 and right 3. Count 1, 2, 3. All right, and there's your slope. So if you wanted to, you can graph these linear functions just by looking at the y-intercept right here at 0. There's no constant, so the y you start at 0. I'm going to say start here. Start at 0, 0. And then you use your slope. Okay, now slope is rise over run. So when I say two-thirds, I'm saying rise two, run three. Remember, it's rise over run all the time for slope. So if you wanted to, without the table, you could just go up to right three from the y-intercept and draw, draw your line. That's typically what advanced students do. Okay? Now the rest of the functions here, two, y equals two-thirds x plus one, and then we have a two-thirds x minus two, and two-thirds x plus two. These all look like the first parent here. Uh, but they've been translated or shifted somehow. So you want to figure out, you know, what is this plus 1 or the plus 2 or the minus 2 does to the parent function y equals 2 thirds x. All right, so let's calculate them first. Okay, so let's pick a domain, pick the same domains, and let's calculate the new values. All right, so here we go. So 2 thirds times negative 6 plus 1. All right, so two, 3 and the negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. Remember, this is a video, so by the way, uh, you can pause and play here and rewind if I go too fast, okay? So next one, 2 thirds times negative 3, plus 1. 3 into negative 3 is negative 1, times 2 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. 2 thirds times 0, plus 1. Well, that's just 1, because 0 times anything is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 thirds times 3, plus 1. So we divide, times 2, you get 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 thirds times 6, plus 1. So we get 6 divided by 3 is 2, times 2 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. So when we plot these, you go left 6, down 3, right about here. Left 3, down 1. Zero comma 1. 3 comma 3, and then 6 comma 5, way up here. And notice they all line up on a straight line again. Okay, why? Because these are linear functions, right? And they always line up in a straight line because the slope is constant. Okay, notice the y intercept right here is at 0, 1. That's where we start graphing the line if we're going to do this. And notice that my y-intercept is 1. My slope is 2 thirds. So if you started at 0, 1, you simply go up 2 from there and write 3 using your slope. So once again, you can graph all these linear functions by using just the y-intercept and the slope by analysis right here. You can start and plot the y-intercept first. All right and then use the slope. That's how advanced do it anyways. But once again, I'm showing you how to develop the table of values at the same time because that's important too, because we resort to that technique even in calculus, okay? I teach all the subjects, so uh, even calculus students generate uh, points by using the function, although it's just a little bit more complicated. 
All right, let's try it again. So we have negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. There's the domain, so here we go. So 2 thirds times negative 6 minus 2 this time. Well, here's the arithmetic. Divide first. So divide, uh, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2, times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Next point, negative 3, excuse me, 2 thirds times negative 3 minus 2. Divide first, you get negative 1, times 2 is negative 2, minus 2 more is negative 4. 2 thirds times 0 minus 2, that's 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 2 thirds times 3 minus 2. 3 and 3 is 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And last one, 2 thirds times 6 minus 2. I divide. 6 divided by 2 is 6 divided by 3 is 2. Times 2 is 4. Minus 2 is 2. So we plot. We go to negative 6, comma negative 6, which is way down here. Left 3 down 4. That's off. Left 3 down 4. Uh, 0 comma negative 2, 3 comma 0, and then 6, 2. Right about here, let's say. You have to approximate. Okay, and look again, okay, the y-intercept. Okay, I know the y-intercept right here is negative 2, so it's at 0, negative 2. And that's where we start graphing. And look at the slope here. I can see the slope again. Slope is 2 thirds. What does that mean? It means up 2, right 3. So you go up 2, right 3, and you graph your line. So you can see the slope right there. So if I wanted to, I could just look at the function, write down the slope and in y-intercept, and graph it. You always start the y-intercept and go from there. All right, last function. Let's go ahead and develop a table of values and get good at the arithmetic. This time we're going 2 thirds x plus 2. 2 thirds times x plus 2. So we have uh, divide first, you get negative 2, times 2 is negative 4, plus 2 is negative 2. 2 thirds times negative 3, plus 2. Divide, you get negative 1, times 2 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. 2 thirds times 0, plus 2 is just 2. 2 thirds times 3, plus 2. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4, and last one, 2 thirds times 6, plus 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So let's graph. Left 6 down 2, uh, left 3, up 2, 3 comma 4, right 3 at 4, and then 6 comma 6 right about up here. Okay, so let's analyze something. We've got a slope of 2 thirds and the y intercept of one, uh, 2. So notice the y intercept here at 2, 0, 2. That's where you start graphing. And then a slope of 2 thirds up to right 3. Okay? And so if you look at all of these at once, you'll notice. Okay, something in common here. All these functions have a slope of two-thirds, first of all. Second of all, the y-intercept, all that does is either shift the line up from the parent, the first one being the parent here. If you have plus one here, it just shifts it up one. If you see a minus two, it shifts it down two. Or if plus two, it shifts it up two. So these are vertical shifts. Okay, these plus one, the minus two, and the, the plus two, the y-intercepts here, if it's positive, it shifts the whole line up. If it's negative, it shifts the whole line down, okay? But they all have uh, the same slope. So observations, all the functions have uh, a slope of 2 thirds. Okay, that's the first, first observation. It should be pretty apparent here. I mean, just look at it right here. All four of them have a slope of 2 thirds. And then, secondly, uh, the y-intercept just shifts uh, the, the function either up or down depending on whether it's positive or negative. Okay, 
So I'm going to say this, the offspring. Okay, the offspring, which are the three other functions here. Graph one is the parent. Here's your parent. These other guys are called the offspring. Why? Because they uh, kind of look like them, okay? But they're not exactly the same, okay? The offspring are just translations of the parent, either up or down, depending on the B value. So the offspring are just translations. Shifts, vertical shifts. Translations is a uh, fancy name for shifts. Okay, translations, either up or down. So let's go vertical. All right, depending on the y-intercept. Depending on what's called the y-intercept. Okay, and that's how you graph a linear function using a table of values. Now let's uh, take a look at ones with negative slope, okay? Because you have to deal with that too. Notice there's a negative one half as a slope here. So how do you deal with that? What do they look like? Okay, so the first, the parent function here is y equals negative one half x. And the other one, well, let me see. The other one's uh, either add one to it, subtract two from it, or add two. So as we just learned, so those are some vertical shifts. All right, but how does this parent right here, your first function right here, uh, how does it behave and what does it look like? So let's take a look at that. Now, we know we're going to take negative 1 half times x. So I'm going to have to take my x value and divide it by 2. So because of this, I'm going to pick uh, multiples of 2 now. All right, in the domain. So negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. If there was no fraction involved, I would just pick integers from negative 3 to 3 and just go with it. But I'm going to make my arithmetic easier by picking multiples of 2. So I get negative 1 half times negative 4. I first, a negative times a negative is a positive. And a half of 4, well, let me see, guess what? 4 divided by 2 is typically 2, so it's 2. So negative 1 half times negative 2, the negatives cancel. A half of 2 is 1. Negative 1 half times 0, Anything times 0 is 0. Negative 1 half times 2 is whoa, negative 1. Negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. 2 into 4 is 2. So when you graph these, you go left 4 up 2. Left 2 up 1. 0 is 0. 2 negative 1. And then 4 negative 2. And notice that it goes to the lower right as opposed to the upper right, okay? All functions with negative slope do that. They all behave that way, okay? Even farther here, it has a y-intercept of 0. I know that because there's no constant right here, so b is 0. And the slope, slope equals negative 1 divided by 2. That's down 1, right 1. Remember, it's always rise over run. So in this case, when you have a negative fraction here, just bring the negative up top in the numerator and go down one, right two, okay? Down one, right two. Down one, right two, and so on. So you gotta get used to that, and you have a slope right here. You can see it in the triangle, okay? Down one, right two, every single time. Okay, so what happens when you add one to the graph? Okay, so let's pick a let's pick the uh, same domain here, and let's take a negative one half times negative four, and then add one. Let's see what we get. First of all, the negatives cancel, and two into four is two. So one times two is two, plus one more is three. Negative one half times negative two plus one. First of all, the negatives cancel, and two into two is one. One plus one is two. Okay. So negative 1 half times 0 plus 1 is just 1. Negative 1 half times 2 plus 1. Let's see what we get. 2 into 2 is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Plus 1 is 0. 2 into 2 is 4 times negative 2 is negative 2. Plus 1 is negative 1. 
So you got to be good at the arithmetic, guys. Okay, that's why I do a lot of it. So left four up three, left two up two, zero comma one, two comma zero, four comma negative one. And notice they line up in a line. And so let's analyze here. So notice right here, the y-intercept at one. I know that because b is one right here. There's your y-intercept. <clears throat> and then from here, it's down one right two. Same slope, but, but shifted up one. Okay, so that shifts it up one, that y-intercept. Shifts up one unit. All right, same line basically, but just translated or shifted up one. All right, let's try to graph these other ones by points, and then we'll take a look at the slope of the y-intercept to make sense of it. So negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. So negative 1 half times negative 4, all right, minus 2. So first of all, the negatives cancel. 2 and a 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 1 half times negative 2, minus 2. First of all, the negatives cancel. 2 into 2 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. But 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 half times 0 minus 2. That's 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 1 half times 2 minus 2. So that's 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Minus 2 more is negative 3. Last one, negative 1 half times 4 minus 2. So you divide first, 2 into 4 is 2, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 2 is negative 4. Now you plot, negative 4 comes 0, left 1, down 2, this is left, all right, and down. Uh, then negative 0, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 4, negative 4. And notice, they all line up again, okay, like they always do. So here, the y-intercept is right here. And again, it's been shifted down, all right? Y-intercept shifts down one, uh, two units in this case. Shifts down two units. All right, and then uh, the slope's down and right two. So negative one divided by two. Here's the slope right here. So if you wanted to, you could start at zero, negative two, just by looking at the function. So you start there and then use your slope, down one, right two which is what most people do when they graph linear functions. They don't always do a, write a table of values. I'm just doing that to prove to you that uh, these functions do produce these points. Uh, and then at the end, after we graph by using these points, then we make connections here. We understand that you could easily start at the y-intercept and then use your slope to graph the line. All right, last one. Now we're going to go up to, okay, shift. We're going to shift it up to. So we're going to add 2 to the negative 1 half x. So negative 4 times, excuse me, let me start over. Negative 1 half times negative 4 plus 2. So we div cancel out the negatives first. 2 into 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Negative 1 half times negative 2 plus 2. We cancel out the negatives first. Negative times the negative is a positive. Then divide. 1 times 1 is 1, plus 2 more is 3. Negative 1 half times 0 plus 2 is simply 2. Negative 1 half times 2 plus 2. Well, you divide first. 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, plus 2 is 1. Negative 1 half times 4 plus 2. Well, you divide first. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Plus 2 is 0. So here we go. Let's plot. So negative 4, 4. So left 4 up 4. Left 2 up 3. Uh, 0 comma 2. 2 comma 1. 4 comma 0. And graph your line. All right. So notice here the y-intercept at 0, 2. You knew that in the beginning because right here this is your y-intercept. Here's your slope. 
And again, once again, the slope is down two, right two, excuse me, down one, right two. So from here, you go down one, right two. And you can see how the line is formed. So the observations, once again, they, okay, all these functions have a slope of negative one half. That means negative one over two, down one, right two. And again, offsprings are just translations. When I say that, I'm talking about vertical shifts, okay? Um, translations are shifts vertically, depending on the y axis, or excuse me, y in intercept. Okay? Now, this is a video, right, guys? So if you wanted to, you could rewind and take a look at any part of this video you want. Okay, so this next one right here, uh, this next portion of it, I'm not going to go over. You can take a look at my notes and my on my website here, but this is your practice. Okay, so you do this on your own. You try this, all right, and check the notes on my website. Okay, I post everything up there, so you can do that. What I do want to get into uh, is horizontal and vertical lines. And this is actually fairly simple, okay? So I want to get into it. I'm going to take a look at both types, horizontal and vertical, and uh, just show you how to graph these things, okay? Fairly straightforward. All right, and the key is this. The key is, uh, let's write it up here. The key is that two points determine a line. Two points determine a line. Believe it or not, it's that simple. And if you know that, then graphing these points, even though they look a little bit different, is actually pretty easy and straightforward. So my first type is when y equals just a constant. Okay, y equals b, which is a constant. Notice that there's no x, okay? And there's no x term. This term right here, the mx term is gone. It's missing. Why? Because m is 0. Anything times 0 is 0, right? So when I say if m is 0 and you substitute 0 right there, you get y is equal to 0 times x plus b. And that resorts to y equals b. Why? Because that's just a 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So what does the graph look like when that happens? Well, you might already guess something because you know what, what lines look like with uh, 0. So we talked about that before in section one, okay? However, I don't want to spoil the surprise, so let's just go for it, and then I'll make connections here in a minute. So what we want to do is pick two points, okay? Pick two points where the y coordinate is negative two, where y equals negative two. So I'm gonna just make some up, all right? How about, how about five comma negative two? How about one comma negative two? All right, so keep y negative 2 and you pick any x value x can be any value here okay and now plot them so let's do that so you have 5 negative 2 right 5 down 2 right here and then you have that's right 5 and down 2 and then we go right 1 down 2 so right 1 down 2 is right here and now you graph holy smoke look at this they line up in a horizontal fashion Ah, so this is y equals negative 2. It's horizontal. The question, is that always the case? I don't know. Let's find out. In fact, you know what? Let me just show you on the graph here. So I got this cool graphing program here. And let's enter in y equals negative 2. y equals, all right, negative 2. Look at this. Here's the function right here. See this purple line right here? When y is negative 2, you get a horizontal line that's down 2 and intersects the y-axis at negative 2. 
and it's horizontal. And that should make sense because the slope is zero. And horizontal lines have zero slope. Okay? That's this right here. When I say m equals zero, that makes sense because horizontal lines have zero slope. Zero slope. You should know that. We, we learned that and uh, in section one. Horizontal lines always have zero slope. So let's keep on doing this and let's get some experience. Right now I want to pick two points where the white corner is two. So how about negative three comma two and how about four comma two? So notice that each time I let y equal two. So let's plot these. So left three, this is left three, up two. And this is right four, up two. So I go left three, up two. I go right four, up two. And lo and behold, you connect them and you get another horizontal line. But this time, okay, the it's been shifted up and it intersects the y-axis at two. This is the y-axis up here, the vertical one. It's that easy, my friends, okay? So on this one here, let's pick uh, two y values where y is 4. So how about 1, 4 and 0, 4? So 1, 4 is right 1 up 4. 0, 4 is right here. And if you plot those or connect those points with the straight edge, you notice that y equals 4. It intersects the 4 on the y-axis. So this is up 4. On this one here, pick two order pairs where the you pick any x value, but the y coordinate is negative one. So how about three comma negative one, and how about zero negative one? So right three down one, and then zero comma negative one. All right, this is right and down, and this just means down one. And you pick these, or you plot these, and you draw your line through the points, and notice that y equals negative one represents a horizontal line. All right, down one. It's that simple. When you have functions that are in this form, though, it's a little bit different. But same idea. You pick two points where the x coordinate is 3. So this 3 goes here now. So how about 3, comma, uh, 2? And how about 3, comma, negative 4, let's say? So right and up and right and down. So right 3, up 2. Right 3, down 4. And notice if you pick or you plot these points right here, you have a vertical line. So these are vertical lines. Vertical lines, okay, through these two points. This is right here at 3, comma 2, and this is at 3, comma negative 4. Here I want x coordinate negative 1, so negative 1, comma 2. I'm just making up these y values. And negative 1, comma 4. Again, you choose any y value you want choose, that's an O, uh, any y value you want. So now let's plot. Negative 1, 2 is right up here. Negative 1, 4 is right up here. And notice it's vertical again. So it's a vertical line passing through uh, negative 1 on the x-axis this time. So here's negative 1 right here. Here it's three is right here on the x-axis. X is always three, so you got to find out where it is on the x-axis now. It's a little bit different. Here on this one we have negative four, and I pick make up a y value like five, negative four comma let's say negative one. All right, so left four up five, left four down one right here. Here are the points. Go ahead and graph. So this is a vertical line through negative 4 on the x-axis right here. Remember, this is the x-axis. So this represents x equals negative 4. Last one, here we go, x equals 0. So make up some values here, 0, 3, 0, negative 1. So 0, 3 is up here, 0, negative 1 is here. Oh my goodness, this is the y-axis itself. This is the equation of the y-axis. Okay, so I'm going to put this one in red. So this one right here, this is x equals 0. It happens to be the y-axis. Okay, because it intersected these two points. And that is how it is done, my friends. The only thing you guys need to do is get some practice. All right. Uh, I do have another 
uh, section in this, but I'm going to also talk about it in a later video as well. So I'm going to stop here. Remember, this is a video, so you have the ability to go through this and take a look at any portion you want. We went through a lot today and rewind and uh, review and practice, okay? And then use my website for other resources, okay? This is Mr. Ainsworth. That was a lot, and I'm tired. I'm going to take a break, and I'll see you in my next lesson. Bye-bye.